I, I can't call it, man. I don't know what's going on with some of these people, some of these fans of football. They say they know this stuff and they just... <sighs> YouTube, team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And I am extremely, extremely disappointed in a lot of people. One of the reasons I'm extremely disappointed in a lot of people is because of where their minds, where their heads are at at this point of the off season. Now, I know we all must miss football. We all miss football. It's clear as day. But please, let's just get through this last month. July is the last month where we don't have any football. It's the last month. And as a matter of fact, we're going to get training camp at the end of this month. So we're not going to be completely without football, but this is going, we're in the last period, we're in the, the, the slowest period, but the final period before everything's a full go. But people's minds right now, since they're fiending for football, they, they just want a taste of football so bad that they are willing to think about things, but remove a lot of the logic. So, there was an infamous tweet going around a couple days ago, a couple days ago from Alex Wilson, ESM. I, I, I'm not sure who that is. Um, I had just, I saw the tweet, it came up on my timeline. It, it's gotten a lot of buzz. And this is what he said. The Giants have a quarterback who runs faster than Lamar Jackson. And, and, and that, that was enough right there. That, that was enough right there. That was enough. Let's, let's just get through the tweet. The Giants have a quarterback who runs faster than Lamar Jackson and ranked as one of the most accurate deep passers in the league last season. That's facts. And they've finally given him some actual weapons to work with. We haven't had a wide receiver one in two years and Saquon's injuries. All right. So he's referring to Daniel Jones and Daniel Jones. He they did provide him with weapons this year. They went and they signed Kyle Rudolph, the tight end. They went and they signed Kenny Galladay. Um, they even drafted the uh, the wide receiver from Florida. His name is, is slipping my mind right now. So my apologies. So the Giants have made some moves on offense to make sure that Daniel Jones, so he can not have any excuses moving forward. And that's a good thing. That's a great. I, I love that. I love that. I commend that. I love when teams surround their young quarterback with weapons. I'm all for that. Then, of course, Saquon Barkley, he's coming back from the injury that he had last year. What was it? His ACL, I believe. So that is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. But the first sentence, that, that, that threw me for a loop. That threw me for a loop big time. The Giants have a quarterback who runs faster than Lamar Jackson. Now... <laughs> Of course, this all comes from the whole ESPN stat that they put out on uh, October 23rd of 2020, where it said Daniel Jones' top speed on his 80-yard run was faster than Lamar Jackson's top speed on any run this season. So, on any run that Lamar Jackson had, his top speed did not eclipse that of Daniel Jones' top speed on his 80-yard run. And then it said that Daniel Jones' top speed was 21.2 miles per hour, and Lamar Jackson's top speed for the entire season on any of his runs was 21 miles per hour. So that point two is what he was referring to. And that's fine. Hey, if, if that, that's fine. You're using numbers, stats that ESPN put out. Cool. But if we're looking at an eye test, if we're lining these two up, if we're doing anything like that, you cannot tell me. I don't care who, what team you are a fan of. I could take this Ravens hoodie up. I, I could take it off and throw it on the ground and be completely neutral. Even if I was somebody that didn't even watch football. If you line up Lamar Jackson and you line up Daniel Jones, you mean to tell... <laughs> and something that I, I said a lot through last year. I said a lot, even Lamar Jackson's rookie season. I, I feel like we have not gotten to see Lamar Jackson at full speed yet on a run. Because he'll be running 
A defender will come, he'll shake him, he'll move out the way. He'll evade him. So we don't really get to see Lamar Jackson at top speed. And then even when we think we're going to see him at top speed, like in a Cowboys game, like in a Giants game, like in a Washington football team game. Because I believe, because we, we ran that same play. No, I no, I, maybe it didn't work against the Cowboys. No, it did work against the Cowboys. But the, our, our famous NFC East play that we ran all last year, that the entire NFC East fell for, that play, a lot of times we didn't even get to see Lamar run full speed. Then, because... Well, and there was one there was one of those plays where it was a defender like right by the end zone. But enough times he would be so far ahead of the defense that he'd be looking back. He just start jogging, start dancing and be celebrating on his way to the end zone. We 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 don't get to see this guy top speed ever. But that's not even my uh biggest concern with this whole thing. We all know Lamar Jackson is faster than Daniel Jones. But the the thing that people continue to do with Lamar Jackson, that that and it's not going to go away. It's never going to go away. What a lot of people continue to do, and they will always do it, is that with Lamar Jackson, since he's such a polarizing figure, since he's his name just it shakes up the entire NFL, whether you like it or not. What people tend to do with Lamar Jackson is they will be trying to figure out ways. How can I lift up my favorite quarterback or my favorite player? How can I lift this guy up? I'm trying to think of ways. I'm trying to think of just any possible, just what numbers, what stats or something where I can lift my guy up because it's hard. It's tough. It's frustrating. I just don't know how to. How can I lift my guy? Yo, you know what? Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson. That okay, Lamar Jackson. That guy's name, that his name will get this thing buzzing. Okay. So I'm going to bring Lamar Jackson down so I can lift my guy up. That happens all the time. All the time. You say anything about Lamar Jackson and like you he th- th- this whole thing. He could have said the Giants have a quarterback whose speed is very underrated. And they could have shown his whole top speed thing and then said and he's also ranked as one of the most accurate deep passes in the league last season. That's facts and they finally given him some actual weapons to work with. We haven't had a wide receiver one in 2 years and Saquon injuries. You could have said that, but no. He had to say, the Giants have a quarterback who runs faster than Lamar Jackson. I feel like Lamar Jackson has made a lot of NFL fans, NFL media, uh, NFL analysts, NFL experts very uncomfortable. I feel like he has. He has made people... Very uncomfortable. Very. Because we, we, we see it all the time. Because what a lot of people could do, and I don't I don't understand. Another thing I just don't do not get is how people wake up every day to fight. I log on Twitter, I just see people fighting all day, every day. Every, literally every single day. Todos los dias. Every single day. Just wake up to fight. Argue. I, I can't do it. But we, we've seen it so many times recently, especially with Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson. Oh, my goodness. And I know they both are getting ready to get paid. And they, the, it's, Baker's been thrown in there as well. But the main one has been Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson. Oh, my goodness. I just get so tired of seeing it. And it's like instead of being like, hey, th- this is what Josh Allen is good at. This is what he excels at. He's a really good quarterback. That's how I feel about him. Hey, this is what Lamar Jackson's good at. This is what he excels at. He's a really good quarterback. With Baker Mayfield, hey, this is what he's good at. This is what he excels at. He's, no, he's good. <laughs> but yeah, but you see what I'm saying? You, you can lift these quarterbacks up. You can lift different guys up without having to tear somebody down. You, it's okay if you do that. It's fine. 
There's nothing wrong with doing that. Nothing. It's nothing. So next time you feel like, oh, man, I, I got to put this guy down in order to lift my guy up. I got to put this guy down. You don't have to do that. You can say, hey, man, hey, this guy is good, especially at that. Oh, no, that guy is good, especially at that. Wow. Imagine if these two guys, if you combine them, oh, man, it'd be an unstoppable quarterback. You don't have to tear everybody down just to build somebody else up. And that's not just in the NFL. That's just life in general. That's life, period. You don't have to do that. It's unnecessary. And it's, it's just, <laughs> it, it's clear as day that people, they, they, they need football back. Because they, they can't make it without it. They, they cannot make it without it. Because the, the lack of having an actual football game on, on a Sunday, on a Monday, on a Thursday, and who knows what could happen this season. Because remember last season we had football games on literally every single day of the week. We had some on Tuesday. We had the one on Wednesday. Had it on Friday. So it, it, it happens. But people are missing it more than ever right now. And <laughs> it needs to hurry up and come back. Because it's just all the, uh, the having to be negative in order to say a positive about somebody. It's, it's unnecessary. But that's just my two cents I just had to share today because it just, my goodness, it has just gotten ugly. Anyway, team keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And please, please be positive. Know, know that you are allowed to build somebody up without tearing somebody else down. Y'all be good to yourselves. We out.